Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Today's project, I'm tackling the bathroom storage, the hidden storage that is much needed in a bathroom space. And previously we had this set up, three cupboards. These are kitchen cupboards, top storage kitchen cupboards that the previous owner put on top of each other and it gives loads of bathroom storage but there's trouble in the household of Mendes this week because I've decided I don't want all of that storage. I want to make better use of the visual space and it's not gone down too well with Mr M. So let me explain a little bit more and show you what we've got here and why I want to lose what we've got. Although I love the amount of storage I have in my bathroom space, this cabinet has always really annoyed me. It's not centered due to the towel rail and the shower screen, plus the fact the doors open into the room, which has always made it a little bit awkward. So I'm going to empty the cabinet, see what's behind, and take a look at what we can do with the space that's left over. Okay, so this is the contents of those three big cupboards, bar some rubbish. So at the bottom, we've got two travel cases, which I know that they can go straight into the hand luggage in storage, so they don't need to be in the bathroom cabinet. Above that, the white box full of, um, there's a water flosser in there and a few electrical items that we haven't used in a while. Um, there is suntan lotion and after sun, Again, probably could go in the suitcases. The big white box here, the quality baking potato box. I didn't realize it said that on there. It's got um, products to be used in the bathroom. At the bottom, shampoos, conditioners, face creams, things that haven't been used, and then a load of rammel on top, which I need Mr. M to go through to see what he does and doesn't want. In the black basket is what I see, the top shelf items, the things that we use, every day, so that is toothbrush, mouthwash, um, floss, um, razors, my glasses, things like that, which will go on the top shelf, ready for everyday use. There is the rubbish, lots of empty boxes and things in there. Now let's go back to the empty storage. You can see just how much space there is in all of these cupboards. And if I go down, the height of the storage I want to build is probably just a little bit higher than this cabinet and right across, but just reducing just slightly, not much. Um, as, and as you can see, that's about half as much storage. So if you cut that cabinet in half and place it down there, we're losing half the storage really, but I think it will be so much better. Let's get these cabinets down.
So that's the three cabinets um, detached from the wall. I've shoved along the lower one just so I can get an idea of how visually it will look. As you can see, now that you can see the tiles behind, it feels that little bit bigger um, in that space. And I've pushed this cabinet to one side so that you can see as it would look kind of across. Um, for Mr. M's benefit, these cabinets have a little less at the back. You can see they're not right to the wall. I'm going to make my cabinet right to the wall, but it's going to go in slightly more. I'm going to follow, as you can see on the floor, that very last grout line. That is where my cabinet will end. So when I paint the floor tiles, I've got one full tile to start with. Um, and I think this looks loads better. Before I start building my new bathroom cabinet, I'm gonna talk you through some of the design choices that I've made and the reasoning why. So one of them is the back surface of this cabinet is not gonna be clad with anything. I want to preserve the amount of depth to the cabinet. The other thing is I'm working to this grout line because these tiles are gonna be painted in another episode with a floor stencil and I think it will logically look beautiful if it ends there. There's also going to be a piece of skirting board that runs along that grout line um, to make this cabinet look more fitted as a piece of furniture that's fitted into the space, which means that I have to take that much depth off the outside edges of this cabinet, the actual gubbins that make it a shelved cabinet, Plus, I'm cladding the front with a, a door and some panels either side. So the panels either side, the reason I'm doing one door in the middle, two panels each side, is because of this towel rail. So I thought if I build a slimline panel each side and we'll have one centralised door which opens the correct way, I think will be really lovely. So you can still pop things into those little niches either side and all of your main bathroom stuff will sit in the centre. So I've measured it's about 23 centimetres. It almost falls on this grout line of this tile. So that'll be my depth, 23 centimetres maximum. It's just two centimetres shallower than the original cupboard because it had a back in it. So that should keep Mr M happy. The skirting board will go on there. The next layer will build a framework to sit over our square cube, basically. The square cube I am going to build and not screw into the tiles. This, these tiles have had too many holes put into them already. I'm going to use my wonderful magic trick of using um, silicone to apply it as we did the wall mural and the, um, the windowsills. It's going to be just stuck to the tile, um, shelved out with the shelves at the height to the tallest thing that we've got, maybe the top shelf, a little bit less. The little niche underneath the skirting board here will be empty as well, so that can house toilet paper and maybe our travel bags, something bigger at the bottom. So in theory, that's what I'm going to do. When I come to construction, I will film a little bit more so you can see how this goes in. Um, I'm not gonna film all of the sawing in the workshop. It's a lot of to-in and throwing. So wish me luck, guys. Let's get the carcass of this cabinet built. And then we can start thinking about how we make it look pretty on the outside. And with the magic of TV, just like that, a shelving unit has appeared. But it isn't fixed yet, this is just a dry fit for the project. I will be using sealant or silicone to attach these to the tiled surface. I'm going to talk you through some of the decisions that I've made, one of which is this top shelf is going to be much deeper so larger products can fit on that shelf nice and easy, toothbrushes, that's going to be the most used shelf it's easy reach and of course there's going to be two panels either side these doors so things that are not as much used can go 
into that little niche either side. Um, the middle shelf I thought might be good for small cosmetics, um, face creams, all of that gumph. And the bottom shelf, I've built it the um, toilet paper shelf and probably the travel bags might go into one side or in those niches. And if you see here, the toilet paper, there's enough room for two side by side and one on top. There will be a skirting board, so I brought this here, um, which will fit over the front facing panel once we've made those two panels. Um, and that should sit there and that will be your access into this. So you're gaining a little bit more space at the lower level. One thing that I've got to do before I um, proceed with this is I've got some little plastic shims. The floor slightly goes out to one side, it's not as square, so I'm gonna level this side up and um, then use my sealant to stick this all into place. What else do I need to tell you before we go on fast play? I also cut a small piece to go in at the back. It's a nice tight fit. That will support the back of the shelf here um, to give it a bit more rigidity. Um, there is gonna be, this is not the finished surface. There's gonna be another piece of timber on top with a nice curved edge to it. Um, and that's about it. Tomorrow I will tackle um, the panel work and maybe the top and the trim, then move on to the door, the door opener with um, a little bit of beadwork, which I should think it will elevate the front of this. It should look quite nice. So I'm gonna now dismantle. You can watch on Fast Play, and then you'll see me bright and early tomorrow.
Okay, so I took a little time away from filming so I could get my head around some of the new tools that I've used on this project. One of which is a pocket hole screw jig, which you've just seen me using to attach all of the battens together to create the panels. Another is a different router bit, which I used on the back of these panels so that I could place a panel into the reverse side of the faux panels. And here you can see me now adding the actual top to the top surface. I needed to bulk that out so it wouldn't interfere with the door when I make it. I will take you through some of the paneling work for the door and the trim as I apply it on the door front when we get to that stage. All that's left to do now is apply this extra piece of wood to the top and then a little bit of trim and we can work on the door front. Okay, so let's create a door for our cabinets. Basically, this was the same premise for the side panels. So I'm gonna take you through it step by step what I've done. The main aperture to the opening, I've measured and taken away about three mil from my overall measurement all the way around. I've cut my side timbers to length and the center timbers to length as well and you cannot see what I'm doing just underneath the camera, but I'm using the pocket hole screw jig. Poor camera work, Jonathan. I don't know. Anyway, I'm using tight bond quick and thick to glue the top timbers to the side timbers. And as you can see, I'm going in with two screws from the pocket hole um, openings all the way around the sides, which creates a basically one big square opening. Once this is done, I will use my router to cut away the underside about eight mil down to um, allow a panel to sit into that insert. So you can see what I'm doing just now. I'm clamping down. I've already preset my um, router just to take out a little lip all the way around. I did have to use a blade just to square off the corners after I did this so that I could fit my panel in nice and neat. So then I picked up some um, six mil ply. This is something that I had stored in my workshop for some time. And you can see me, I'm applying um, masking tape to the ply. This really helps the blade not shred through the wood. Um, it, it makes for a cleaner cut. Um, around the edges of the timber. So obviously keep on measuring, um, measure twice, cut once, don't get it wrong, Jonathan. Anyhow, that's what I've done to this stage until the whole panel was cut out and fits into the main ap aperture. And then I will be using um, some no nails glue to firm it all up into that dropped panel on the back side of the cabinet um, and that should make it nice and solid. Also, you'll see me using a few little tacks to hold all of that together nice and firm. And then I'll go in with a little bit of trim work, which is cut all on a 45 degree angle to really add 
a really elegant um, finish to the outside of this cupboard door. And that's about it. That's what I did. It looks kind of simple when it's speeded up, but I was learning on the job. This is the first time I've ever done this. So if I can do it, you can all give this a go. It was pretty much simple. If you've got the right tools, anyone can do it. Okay, so my bathroom storage is just about finished. All of the woodwork is finished anyway, and I'm not quite sure whether you got to see the whole process because storage was out on my device and I lost a lot of video footage without even knowing. But nevertheless, I'm gonna talk you through where I'm at with this cabinet. All of the trim work is on. I've worked on this over a few nights. I've actually got a busy schedule at this time of year. I'm a hairdresser, so I'm busy throughout this time of year. And I'm coming home every evening just to do a little bit more. And last night, I basically corked in all of my trim work on the cabinet. And I did fix in the skirting board. This is the only skirting board that's been fixed because it's all integral to this cabinet. The rest will go on around the room once the floor is painted. So I'm really happy. It's all been sanded, nice and smooth. The door is hung. The door really went in quite well. Making sure that I got everything square was really key to how this um, actually lays out. It's got a little bit of a bounce in the door, 
Um, I think this hinge is just slightly out, but I'm not going to move it. I'm adding a clip mechanism to lock this shut. And at the bottom, I need to add a little wedge to, so once it clips in there, it will line up really neatly at the bottom. But other than that, a handle will go on and we're good to go. So today or this evening, I've decided just to give this a primer coat. I wouldn't normally prime using um, Annie Sloan satin paint, but in this case, I am doing because this piece of wood, this piece of wood, and this piece of wood was all reclaimed. I had some six mil marine ply that I had stored away in my studio for a couple of years, and it's taken in some of, you know, some of the dirt over the years. So I'm gonna make sure that it's sealed. Plus the fact it's also pine that I've been using, and there's a few knots in there. So my PX4, which you'll see me using quite a lot, Crown PX4, will work as a stain blocking prime. Um, it will also stop any tannolins, anything that this might kick back before giving the end coat, which is gonna be the same color as the windows. So that's it really. You can watch me just paint away with the primer coat and then maybe I'll come home from work, feel all excited and put the overcoat over the top. Well, I could not be more thrilled with the outcome of my bathroom cabinet. It looks absolutely amazing. Plus the fact Mr. M is very happy with the amount of storage and how it looks. Looking forward to moving on to the next few steps to complete this bathroom, one of which is these bathroom tiles, these gray tiles are gonna be painted and stenciled, which will really elevate the whole space and tie everything together with my colour choices to make this bathroom complete. So thank you for joining me once again. If you've found me from this video and you want to see some of the other projects that I've done in this bathroom space, then you'll need to go back to episode one of my bathroom makeover. And also, if you've enjoyed what you see here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for future projects. I will catch you all next time.